Hello, I am Samuel from POSIX. I'm here already for the pitches, apparently. Uh, and uh, with POSIX, we try to tackle the challenge about safety. And we did that by do, uh, performing accurate tracking to uh, predict accidents. Um, and so when the, the challenge started, we sat with the coaches and I was uh, asking, so how many times does an accident happen at the port of Antwerp? Is it once every 10 years that a fatal accident happens? It's not. It's about uh, several times a year uh, that a fatal accident happens. And I was absolutely in shock. Uh, but then if you look at the numbers, it actually does make a bit of sense. A whole lot of people are working at the port, about 8,000 uh, workers. And so uh, accidents happen. And so they spend uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of money on this every year to prevent safety. And if something happens, to also accommodate uh, the people. And uh, the, the company in charge there is uh, SEPA, who tries to organize all the companies so that they try to have the same safety uh, policy uh, for all of them. Um, and uh, one of the policies is that by 2020, they want to improve safety by introducing new technology, and that's why we are here for this challenge. So our first idea was, okay, let's, uh, let's tackle safety. We're, trying to do, we're going to try to do everything. We're going to track everybody everywhere uh, with uh, GPS, with Bluetooth low energy. We will add some ad additional sensors to it. We will use LoRa uh, to, to send all the data to some central points. And uh, then we started looking at that and, and, and computing, and we saw that this is not feasible because it would be way too expensive. Also, in terms of, uh, of battery life, it's impossible. It's like trying to build a smartphone by yourself, and we know that they last for one day. Uh, and even that device wouldn't be able to solve any problem. Uh, so that's why we tried to narrow the focus a bit. Um, and so our focus went to the heavy vehicles. Why? Because you have a lot of heavy vehicles moving very fast at the port, and there are people around that, and when these things collide, accidents happen. And these are the type of accidents that cause a lot of injury, and most of the times uh, result in, uh, in death. Um, so our design goals there was, can we do something about that? Uh, with the focus on having a very reliable and robust system, because the port of, uh, of Antwerp is a very uh, harsh environment with all the metal containers. It's very hard to have a reliable system. Um, another thing is that we didn't want to have too much infrastructure, or uh, preferably none at all. Uh, little maintenance to the system, and then something that is feasible with a small time to market. We don't want something very fancy that can happen in 10 years. We want it in the next few years. And so that's why we went on to do tracking around the heavy vehicles. We want to track all the people around it very accurately so that we can uh, inform the driver when something is happening, when something is, someone is too close uh, to the vehicle, or maybe even halt the vehicle when somebody is just in front of it. Uh, furthermore, all the people around there, they can use gestures, which they are already doing. And these gestures can also be uh, shown to the driver so he knows exactly what's going on on the field without having to look all around him all the time. And for this, we're going to use uh, ultra-wideband technology and uh, an accelerometer. So what the hell is ultra-wideband technology? Uh, and why would we even use it? Well, it's a, a technology specifically designed for very harsh environments. Um, and like I said, the port is one of the most harsh ones. It's 10 to 50 times more accurate than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in terms of positioning. Uh, it's still low power, and it's not interfered by other wireless technologies such as 3G or 4G or uh, things in the ISM band. So in that sense, it's the perfect technology to, to use. So how are we going to do it? Well, down below you see a, an example of the thing we hacked together uh, this weekend. Uh, there are four antennas on the side, and these are used to capture the signals uh, from the workers. And they will be able to compute the position very accurately, about 50 centimeters, in a very large range of about 50 meters around the driving vehicle. And so it's very necessary that it is very accurate and that you have a large range because the vehicle will be moving very fast 
and you have to be responsive enough to detect the presence of these people. Uh, and like I said, the driver will have a visualization of this. Um, all the data that is coming can also be uh, connected to some central point where all the data is connected for later analysis with an SAP system. But we focus us mostly on generating the very accurate positioning ourselves. So we have a nice closed solution for this problem. So this was the, the moving vehicle, and then we have uh, a moving the, the workers, uh, and they will be carrying a mobile tag. And for this mobile tag, we really thought about, okay, it has to be very small, it has to be low power, uh, with a capacity of almost a year, um, and it has to be able to identify the user. And that's exactly uh, what we did and what we used. And now uh, we're very bold, and we're going to do a live demo of this, just to show you how it works. Michiel, can you come a bit closer? Oh. So, yeah, here you see um, here you see uh, the truck that is in the middle, and you have a very uh, you have a red circle where you can't go because that's too dangerous, and then you have a green circle, and that one is okay, and you can exa exactly see how our worker Bob is moving around, uh, moving very safely, and when he would arrive too close to the to the device, then a warning goes. And so the driver really accurately knows if the, the person would be in front of it, in the back, on the left, or on the right. Um, and then, uh, like I said, it's not only about positioning, but only also about the gestures and, and finding something. So now uh, our worker, Bob, will illustrate what happens when an accident happens. He's stumbling, he's falling, and he fell, man down. So the system <laughs> the system uh, measured it and said it, and uh, now people can go to help him. Thank you very much. That was our solution for this hackathon. POSIX, jury, uh, what are the actual criteria you're judging on? Can someone tell me? OK, the first criteria is the idea. The okay. idea. The second one is the, is the design of the solution. All right. Then the functionality. One of them is the team. So one of the first questions, I suppose, with your presentation is, uh, how did the team go from the idea to the solution, which is the last criteria? Okay, your, your time has started. Then, yeah. if okay, that's the first so question. the first question is, how was the team dynamic and how did you come as a team from the idea to the solution? Um, so um, we are a, a spin-off company from uh, Ghent University. And so we already have uh, an ultra-wideband uh, solution. Uh, but <clears throat> this works more, uh, this works differently that it, uh, the, the infrastructure is fixed. So what we did here is try to put the infrastructure on the mobile device very close to each other. And there we hacked, uh, what we changed is um, we changed the algorithms that you can go beyond uh, the, the, the infrastructure that is mobile in this sense. And then we also added uh, the, the, the fall detection that it is also wirelessly transmitted and then shown on the, the view that we uh, built for this, uh, this w uh, competition as well. Two I hope. Yeah. We've, we've seen in your live demonstration that uh, with a static, yeah. it's in, instead of a mobile uh, machine, yeah. just up to which speed do you think that this mobile machine would, uh, would it work? So, so it's very hard to hear yeah. anything yeah. here. Up to which speed do you think that the machine can run 
just to have it operated? Yeah. Is this so um, now uh, it's about 15 times every second that you get a position update. And so if you move about uh, 30 kilometers per hour, uh, which is some, uh, an average, no, like a good speed uh, for vehicles at the port, you would move about 8 meters a second. So 15 times in that frame, you would be able to position. So that's very accurate, and you will be able to definitely uh, measure this. What happens if a conflict arrives? Does the, the vehicle stop then? Or if another? What, if, what happens if there, if there is a conflict detected? Does the vehicle then stop? And second question is, what, um, once again, the, the former question was uh, in a static environment, but also what about the inf interference with other vehicles? Because um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of straddle carriers sur uh, moving around in a terminal. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Um, so now the, the mobile tags, they send out a very small pulse. And this can be captured by uh, the beacons that are on top of the, the mobile vehicle. And the pulse can be captured by all the different vehicles at the same time. So all the vehicles will detect the same person when it is in range. So there is no interference in that yeah. sense. I think the question was also, um, do the vehicles see other vehicles, right? Or was that not, no, that wasn't the question. So Did I answer your question? He all right, no. awesome. Why am I here? I don't know. <laughs> um, your three minutes are over, jury. Thank you. All right. Can I have a big hand of applause for, from Posix?